Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for October 31st, 2020. It occurred around 3.20 p.m. Eastern Time. Well, taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, we have Invest Area 96L, which is sitting right now to the south and east of Jamaica and is likely to become a tropical depression by 5 o'clock this evening uh, is when advisories will likely begin to be initiated. This is drifting westward over the next uh, couple of days or so and will find itself here in the South Central Caribbean uh, within the next few days where it has a prime environment to intensify. Now looking at a closer up visible satellite loop here, we can see a couple of very important things ongoing structurally with the storm. Uh, first of all, we have what appears to be well-defined banding on the east and northern sides of the storm, a well-defined banding pool. And we can also see that there is very healthy mid-level circulation associated uh, right over here, kind of near where the centralized banding is. And we can also see that if we take a close look at the low-level cloud features on the southern side, they do seem to be being pulled into the circulation up here. And if you look at the cloud features, the lower-level cloud features on in towards the right or towards the left rather on the western side of the storm you can see that these are in a rotating fashion around and you can also see back then towards the south and east we're getting the streamwise flow in and around so there does seem to be a circulation and a surface flow that has indeed formed in this area and that is very important because now that we have a surface flow or what seems to be a surface flow we can start to get a more accurate feel on what is going to happen uh, with the storm. But again, a lot is going to hinge on how intense this gets over the next couple of days. And the h warp has been very, very crucial uh, with this evolution and has been forecasting this uh, quite well, and which we'll talk about here in just a second. But if we look here, uh, and this is the mid or kind of the lower levels of the atmosphere, but it's the 5,000 uh, foot layer, the 850 millibar layer in the atmosphere. And this is the spin at that 5,000 foot level. And again, these reds and whites, that is the higher cyclonic spin at the 5,000 foot level. And again, you can very clearly see this is from earlier this afternoon, uh, but you can very clearly see an area of well-defined structured vorticity down here uh, in the Caribbean. And again, this is kind of where the axis really is. It's a little displaced, uh, but it's more just a tad bit north of that. But the general area is this broad area, but it is concentrated and does have some pretty good vorticity with it. And it is likely now a tropical depression. And again, this will be moving and drifting towards the west and northwest over the next couple of days before bending back westward. And this could impact portions of Central America, South Central America, uh, over the next uh, four to five days or so. So it's going to be very important to kind of keep an eye on this because this does have the potential to impact those areas beyond that time frame and could be a formidable hurricane as it does so. Now I can see here the official National Hurricane Center forecast is, again, near 100% moving due westward over the next couple of days or so. And this is going to be the general uh, motion for the remainder of the storm's lifetime, more than likely, uh, all the way up until it approaches the South Central uh, Caribbean. Now, after that point, there's a lot of uncertainty in terms of what could happen. There is several different possibilities, which we'll dive into more in a moment. But one of those possibilities is that this goes into South Central America and then just basically dissipates into a remnant circulation. Uh, the other possibility is that this kind of goes maybe a little bit more north uh, in the short term and tries to get steered more into kind of the Gulf of Honduras uh, or just kind of lingers around in this area like the GFS is suggesting and then kind of comes back northward towards Cuba. So there's really three different possibilities at the moment, but I think we're starting to get a lock on the ideas that are starting to happen. Now, here's the GFS forecast. This is at the 500 millibar layer. So this is at 18,400 feet in the atmosphere. And what we're essentially looking at here is we're look, just looking at the overall evolution of the vorticity at the mid-levels in the atmosphere, and then also the ridge and the trough position that is going to be occurring over the next couple of days. Now, we can see here, this is valid as of 18 Zulu time, so just about an hour ago, about an hour and a half ago, rather. 
Again, a very well-defined zonal flow over most of the United States right now. Very big zonal flow across the Midwest and kind of the, you know, the interior United States, basically. Uh, but what's occurring here, this is the vorticity associated with 96L, soon to be Tropical Depression 29. And then we have a ridge of high pressure over the Gulf of Mexico and a ridge of high pressure located over the eastern and central part of the Atlantic. So a couple of things ongoing. Now, we progress this forward. This is 24 hours from now. There's a little bit of a difference. You can see that this rather zonal flow across the United States gets disrupted and starts to kind of dig down. You see these wind uh, barbs in here. They're digging down. These isobars are now digging down. And this is in response because there's a trough and an associated cold front that's digging down across the central United States. And this cold front is going to bring a reinforcing shot of cooler air towards the southeastern United States and even Florida over the next couple of days. But behind this front, there is, again, an associated low pressure region way up in this area. And that's digging towards the cold fronts moving southeast, but the trough is moving towards the northeast. So we can kind of see that this trough amplifies. It digs down a little bit. This is uh, 42 hours from now by early Monday. This cold front is now well positioned over the Florida Peninsula, back over the Gulf of Mexico and into central Texas. While this uh, big bowling ball low is digging down across the northeast, could bring some snowfall to that region uh, as well. But you now start to see that we're getting a higher bit of consolidation associated with 96L at this point. Now, exactly where this is going to be, you know, give or take 50 to 100 miles, but this has generally trended staying more northward. Over the, the last couple of days, we've seen the GFS kind of progress uh, from being southward uh, in the short term. You can see some of these runs were southward. Now they're kind of northward, and we've also been uh, a little bit faster with the trough. You can see this trough is a little bit faster. Uh, so this trough is faster. The front is now located uh, mainly over the Florida Peninsula instead of well back over Alabama and Georgia. And we can, again, run that back several frames ago where this was over the Florida Peninsula or the Panhandle, then over Alabama, etc. Now we see how this has kind of come forth with time. We have a probable tropical cyclone here. And then we have this cold front that's digging down here. The trough is a little bit quicker and it's higher amplitude. Uh, we can see that it's a much higher amplitude in the vorticity sense. Uh, it's a much stronger uh, trough. So this it equals that any storm that is up here that can get modestly intense would probably feel that northwesterly tug and be further northward at this time. Now, Given the fact that we already have a storm that is trying to consolidate up here, this is uh, some of the islands over here, this is Jamaica, uh, but given that we have a storm that is trying to consolidate right here instead of well down over here or over here, it seems like that we might have that transition towards a little bit more northerly storm in the short term. Now we move this 54 hours from now, we go 84 hours from now, there's a very big difference here. You can see that the GFS forecast has a rather broad gyre setup down here. So the GFS is showing this gyre that ends up developing here. And you notice that we don't get a really strong storm that ends up really developing. Now, given the fact that we already have a storm developed and that it's kind of playing out much like the H-Wharf was suggesting, we may have a much stronger storm than the GFS is depicting here. Now, this could be a convective bias problem, but one of the, the main kind of key points here a uh, big ridge sitting over Texas and emerging out into the Gulf of Mexico at this time. And this is ever so slightly expanding and trying to expand eastward with time. In the same factor, there's this trough digging in across here. This front is now kind of draped across this area. You can't really see it, but it's draped across here. And then we have another high pressure area setting up down here in the central Atlantic. Now, what ends up happening is we kind of get the storm to move over portions of Central America, and then by, you know, day five into day six, it starts to make that turn towards the north and just kind of for giggles here. Uh, by hour 144, this is now consolidated, and it's trying to move nor more northward. Now, the GFS ensembles, you know, rather interestingly, 
have played along into that idea. So the ensemble forecast is playing along into this idea, but there is still a, a large handful of members that are bringing this into Central America and keeping it over there and not allowing the turn northward with time. So this is very crucial because that's a big role in determining what's going to happen. Now, for contrast here, this is the h war forecast, the 12Z run of the h war again, valid as of 2 p.m. this afternoon. Again, we can see that we have an already pre-existing front right now over Florida, and this is sliding southward with time and going to become somewhat of a stall front in this area. Now, we move this out here. This is going to be 24 hours from now. We can see the storm is trying to better consolidate in here. This front is now sliding and stalling out. Now, if we move this out here to 45 hours from now, you can see just the ever so existence of that trough and the existing front that's in through here. But you can see big ridge of high pressure sitting over eastern Texas right now at hour 45. This is by early Monday sliding eastward and expanding its uh, amplitude. So this storm is now going to feel a tug in the southwesterly direction once this ridge expands eastward. And we can kind of see what ends up happening is this ridge becomes very dominant now. It's a very dominant, predominant ridge. And that flow is now forcing the storm in the mid-levels towards the southwest, basically. You can kind of just follow that flow is out of the southwesterly direction all across here. And it's forcing this to turn southwesterly because this ridge is also expanding and it is a higher amplitude. Thus, this storm is now under the influence of this strong ridge towards the north. And then you can see here on the H wharf how by 90 hours from now, this ridge is very well expanded across most of the Gulf of Mexico at this point, And the storm has no other opportunity but to dive into Central America. Now, the Euro model for contrast here, again, much of the same, but you notice where the storm is 24 hours from now. It's well south of Jamaica at this point uh, by kind of, a, you know, an approximate value of about 200 nautical miles. Uh, the storm right now is sitting a, you know, still a couple hundred miles towards the south and east. But if it moves maybe something like this, it's going to be a little bit closer than the Euro was forecasting. And we can kind of see that the overall movement so far today has been a little bit towards the west or, you know, west-northwest kind of. Uh, but it's kind of moving somewhat in this general direction right here. So we kind of have an envelope of possibilities that this might end up from. And this is going to matter in the long range because you notice how the, G or the euro does develop this into a very strong cyclone here. Very big ridge setting up across portions of the Midwest here on this particular model. And again, you can see the strong trough, but that really doesn't matter because the storm is under the influence out and generally out of the southwest. So it forces that southwesterly dive into uh, portions of Central America. So this is very important because the overall envelope of possibilities uh, is a very wide range. And if we take a very quick look at the GFS ensembles here, again, you can very clearly see that the 12Z ensembles generally westward for the next couple of days, but then you can clearly see there's a handful of models that dive this into Central America, but a larger majority of the models that swing this out and around Central America and into, again, the Northern Gulf. And now if we take a look at this from a different perspective here, we'll look at the GFS ensembles in the mean sea level pressure for the uh, Western Atlantic Basin. We can really see that there's a couple of very stark differences here. Now, if we move this uh, forward, again, this is uh, 60 hours from now. We're going to go uh, out to hour 84. You can see there's a wide swath of possibilities here for where a storm may or may not even be at this time. And uh, we'll go out even further. This is virtually looking at hour 108, then hour 120. There's a wide range of possibilities from a storm being completely engulfed over portions, uh, really, of Central America to a storm... Uh, that is more none of the less located over the Western uh, Caribbean. So this is very important because this may have an opportunity uh, to pull northward on this particular model and be of problem and of consequence down the road. So it's very important that this is going to, you know, th there's going to be a lot of considerable uncertainty going forth with time uh, regarding the eventual evolution here of 96L. Now, the one thing 
then 96L will have in its favor is the upper level wind and the uh, water temperatures down in that region. We'll start here with the upper level wind. This is the H4 forecast for the 200 millibar wind pattern uh, in the atmosphere. And again, a very clear anticyclonic flow developing across most of the Caribbean right now. Very low shear environment at this time, allowing the storm to intensify rather modestly. Once an inner core starts getting going, this is uh, 66 hours from now, according to the H wharf down to 962 millibars. This is deepening rapidly because you notice this very broad upper level anticyclone, uh, which is really prompting uh, the storm to have a very good intensification rate, uh, gets down even into the uh, mid to low 940s. So you can definitely see, but you can also see that turn start to occur and then this moves inland. Now, the one thing, again, that the storm will also have to work with here is the very high upper ocean heat content values. And we can see here, uh, as of yesterday, this is the upper ocean heat content value. As of yesterday, these reds and whites, this is the higher upper ocean heat content. And uh, again, you can very clearly see that this area is very primed uh, down here across most of this area, very primed sea surface temperature-wise. And this is going to be moving into some of the highest sea surface temperatures uh, reminiscent to what Delta had to deal with uh, back when it developed into a Category 4 in the southwestern Caribbean. So a couple of things that's going to be very keen on, on kind of watching here over the next couple of days. Again, there's a lot of uncertainty, but I feel like we're starting to get a little bit better of an idea that, first of all, we're going to have a tropical storm or probably a hurricane uh, somewhere near Central America uh, by next week. Again, we can see by early next week here, we will probably be dealing with something, uh, whether it's something like the GFS shows, which is a broad disorganized system, or whether this is something much like the H wharf shows, which is a very compact, uh, powerful hurricane near Central America on, uh, just after, uh, election day, uh, is that going to happen? We'll have to see again, a lot of considerable uncertainties, the possibility is there for both, and it does look like that we are trending in the direction more so towards the h wharf solution. Uh, not sure about the intensity, uh, but certainly in terms of the location and uh, also partly because of the you know structure that it has currently. So a lot that we're going to have to watch here over the next several days. Again, we're going to have a lot to kind of keep an eye on. Nothing to worry about yet down the road. Uh, again, you know, if you're in Florida, if you're in, you know, the Bahamas, Cuba, Jamaica, even no need to worry right now, but keep monitoring. We'll likely have advisories being initiated at five o'clock and we'll know a lot more at that point this evening. All right. With that being said, hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon. Even of course, I am Michael Romali. I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.